So common themes. First thing, they don't ask for permission. When you want something, you go for it. We tend to wait for others as if we need their approval to run our business, to start a business, to disrupt a business. And we, we think about other people before we think about the legacy we wanna create. When it comes to your dreams, you have to go after it. Don't ever ask others for permission when you're in pursuit of your dreams. Those who hold that promissory note will slow you down. A funny thing happens when you reach for your success. The bandwagon fills up, but you will never catch people reaching for greatness ever asking for permission. Next, high-performing people constantly generate successful traits like clarity or energy or courage or influence. While unsuccessful people think they don't have these traits, it's not what you have, it's what you generate. So it's not true that some people have traits and some people don't, like enthusiasm, confidence, um, persuasion, motivation, successful people, people that have reached greatness, high performers, they are actively focusing on generating high performance habits. So you need to generate clarity. You need to generate energy. You need to generate courage. You need to generate productivity, okay? They get things done, but they get the right things done to move them towards their ideal outcome. You need to generate influence. And under generating, focus plays a huge role, which we'll talk about in a second. In order to generate something, you have to focus on it long enough till after you're uncomfortable. Number two, stay invested in the long term. They aren't dabblers. One of the first questions they ask themselves is, is this going to keep me fascinated and engaged for the next 5, 10, 15 years? And does it match my values? This is powerful. Broke people live day by day. Those who make less than six figures plan week by week. Those who make six figures plan month by month. Those who make seven figures plan year by year. But those who have reached greatness work in decades and they know that they have a life obsession or one big mission that they dedicate everything to. Think LeBron James, think Elon Musk, think Denzel Washington, Mother Teresa, Jay-Z, Isaac Newton, Aristotle, Albert Einstein, Henry Ford, Carol Shelby, these people think in terms of an obsession and a mission, not week, month, year by year. Number three, they focus 100% on their strengths. The ultimate power in life is knowing your strengths and weaknesses. When you figure out your strengths, then it's finding those who complement your weaknesses and those who love what you don't like doing. So I was at a company who had everything backwards, obviously, which is why they've struggled and I, I moved on a long time ago but they wanted me to hire people and hire managers and leaders and executive assistants and sales managers who did everything, which I get the premise of it, but you're never gonna have people really reach their max potential if you have them do everything, even things they hate. I totally flipped that on its head and I wanted people based on their personalities, based on their core values to do A, what they were best at, B, what they were innately made to do. And when I got all the right people in the right spots and I had everyone working on their strengths, our business exploded, right? So you have to find people that complement your weaknesses, complement your strengths and love executing what you're weak at. I was watching an interview with Ray Dalio and, and P. Diddy and Ray Dalio is worth, I think 18 or 20 billion. P. Diddy's almost a billionaire, right? So another key here is you can learn at all times. P. Diddy's still trying to learn. He's taking notes. He's worth, I believe, $900 million. He's taking notes, right? And Ray Dalio said one of the biggest keys to his career was obviously mastering what he did, but it was finding excellent people who can execute things that you couldn't or could execute things better than you could. So finding, he said to hire someone that strictly finds A players for you, so you don't have to. So that's an actual position. If you're not good at finding A players, great people hire people to find the best for you, right? But the point of that is, even if you're worth 900 million, you still wanna be investing in yourself, learning and growing. And finding the right people is everything. Next, this one's very clear. They take very few opinions. They rarely ever let another human being affect their state of mind. They truly understand that when someone else affects their state of mind, they have control over them. 
If someone gets to you or offends you, they have control over your mental state of mind and they don't let that happen. Instead of taking everyone's opinion, start seeking the valuable lesson in everything you do, everything you hear, everything you experience, and everything you pass by. No matter if the project fails or succeeds, write down what you learn from it. Every person you meet and everything you do has a lesson you can learn. It's up to you to figure out that lesson and you do it before you forget. Write it down in your journal right away. Then read your journal, I call it a lesson journal, often. What lesson can you apply today to your next project or to your next problem? Figure it out, then do it. Find a way to apply and use that right away and continue to record your results. So successful people that have reached greatness, they learn from every situation, but they take very few opinions and they're very careful who they respect because who you respect is who you become. Learn to love and leverage failure. There's a Chinese figure skater who fell 20,000 plus times before she became a gold medalist at the Olympics. This is called the bounce, okay? Be resilient. The very process of greatness means you will fail more than your competition and more than most people. There's something phenomenal that happens when you stay with your craft. Can you stay with your vision to be able to be the absolute best at what you do longer than anybody else? Think about that. Can you stay dedicated to your craft longer than anybody else. Don't listen to your critics in particular, block out the noise and, and stay true to your vision of being the absolute best at what you do. Criticism is a defense mechanism from scared people, right? Book out the noise of the critics, block out distractions when you fail. And remember, failing is part of the process on getting to world class. You can't get better as an athlete. You can't get better as a performer. You can't get better as an entrepreneur. You can't learn how to play the piano like Mozart without hitting the wrong notes, right? A lot of wrong notes. So what I'm suggesting is this, the very process of getting better means you will fail more than the ordinary person. You have to have bounce, which means never giving up. So thinking about how much bounce do you have? The harder you work for something, the more invested you are in something, the harder it is to give up. And greatness, people that reach that never give up. So under learning to love failure is this, you want experimentation over perfection. Test all your crazy ideas. No matter how crazy they sound, try it out. Successful people focus on experimentation, not perfection. You have to give up the need to be liked and you have to give up the need to be perfect. You might think that some people that reach greatness are perfectionists. Some are, but the reality is this. You have to give up the need to be perfect to test and to be authentic. So by the time a six-figure entrepreneur maybe starts one project because they're waiting for it to be perfect, uh, an eight-figure earner or, or a multimillionaire or someone that reached greatness has tried 10 things to work, they're already on to the next idea. So it's all about experimentation, not perfection. Number six, we've talked about it before, but obsession for your craft. Have a passion for your craft, yes, but when you ask people that are great, why do you do what you do? Why do you work every day? It, it's because I get to do it. See, genius is not genetics, but it's persistence of a specific craft along with daily deliberate practice. Passion's important and passion's the fuel because you love doing it, but people need to feel that passion and you need to lead and be passionate regardless of where you are. Passion will allow you to keep going when you feel like giving up and when you focus on being a specialist, greatness is about an obsession, an intelligent obsession, and genius is about obsession, whether in your business, in your sport, in your skill. Warren Buffett said the single most important factor of him making billions, playing world-class and being on his game was focus. Thomas Edison was asked the key to his success and he said most people do many things all day. I just focus on one thing. Concentration on the vital few, right? Kobe didn't leave practice without shooting 300 plus shots and he got all his confidence from the action he took. RIP Kobe and Gianna and everyone, that was still a crazy, and we'll talk about that later, but think about the transcendent message and that mama mentality that he brought when he passed. People will never forget him because he wasn't just about himself. He was about making the game of basketball better. And I will never forget him because he was outside himself and on purpose.
Hey, what's up? And thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy this video and this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button below, put the notifications on, and I assure you, you'll love this content in these videos.